Okay, so I'm here with Neil Johnson, film director, video maker, whatever. Um, you're in Scotland here at the moment. Um, we're in actually in my house in um, the north of Scotland. Neil's been travelling about. What have you been doing up here? Tell me, tell me what you've, got, you've been up to. Well, uh, it's very bleak outside, isn't it? <laughs> I've seen the pictures. Very wet. wet yeah. Feet. Um, I've... Well, it's kind of weird. It's a, it's a, it's a long story. I, I injured my hand from touching the computer too much, and <laughs> is, is, is that the real story? Yeah, yeah. I, I would like to tell people I was punching terrorists, but <laughs> I, I actually uh, damaged it uh, pretty badly, and so I have to, I can't do any post production for right. for a little while because I'm running it, but I, I end up just doing half of it myself. And I, I was just thinking, man, I really need more coverage for the Time War, which, yeah. for those who don't know, the Time War is Adolf Hitler traveling through time, rewriting history, and then his daughter, played by Tracy Bertzel, Tracy Bertzel, is trying to stop him. And it's really her story. It's really the daughter of Hitler uh -huh. and her adventures through time and space. And she's not an evil character, uh, but it does deal with morality and stuff. Mm -hmm. And... It, it may sound a little bit like Man in the High Castle, but it's nothing like it. And I, I have pitched this to some famous producers who said, we don't know what the hell this is. This is <laughs> they, they don't understand what it could be and the texture and the flavor. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, it's, um, it's like, I guess it's kind of like the bunker crossed with a Stanley Kubrick movie, um, you know, or something. But it's, but then you've got these epic battles in there. You know, it it does show. It's called the Time War for a reason. So how how you've been filming this a while now? So how how mm. much have you actually got in terms of stuff done, <laughs> or have you lost track now? I've I have lost track. Yeah. Um, you know, I am. I think I've gone a little insane. <laughs> the reason being, and I mean, this is the problem. Uh, you know, my movies are of a certain level and quality yeah. and it's only because of budget. And I do a lot, I do really well on my small budgets. People don't realize how bad my budgets are, but they think, okay, they judge my film by Hollywood standards. And this is unfair because I don't have a Hollywood budget, yeah. but the movies sell and get released. And, and, you know, I, I cop it really badly in the, in the press, not so much in the press, but sometimes in the press, but generally from the general public because they, 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 ex they think I'm on the, Guardians of the Galaxy budget, mm -hmm. and I'm not. Which you can understand that to a certain extent that people make that assumption because if, yeah. you, if you go by Rogue Warrior, which you know is did really well, is uh, a film that belies its um, budget in terms of the the special effects and the production and that sort of thing, and it looks ten times more possibly than I mean I I, I know you've told me how much it cost to make so I know it it looks far more expensive than it actually was to make, mm. um so you can understand how that mistake would be made by people that people would think oh it's got thousands millions to throw at this film, and then the next one it's going to be the same issue that you're going to come up with again but you've got to persuade people actually I don't have this. You know this money. So is is that a problem then? Trying to get you know people on board or to persuade them about the story and and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, it's a terrible problem. And I mean, it's, uh, you know, I get I get so harshly judged, um, and yet I guarantee you know I'm mean, I'm not trying to blow my own trumpet, but if you give the same budget I have to, you know, a, an A list director. Mm. They probably can't do what I do, mm. and this is a fact. And I've been told this by I've met a, I've got a lot of directors who are friends who do ten, twenty million dollar movies, and they say they tell me they say we're shocked at what you can do, mm. and you have more freedom than we have, and you have the dream job. They tell me even though I'm broke and they're not. So I, I you know, I, I understand what they're saying, but you know that being said, why aren't the movies bigger and better and everything else if I do have that much freedom? It's, it's you know, you, you're, you're directing and making a movie with your hands tied behind your back yeah. already. And then, you know, you're at the mercy of the weather and the, the this and the that. Um, so because of all of that, it's forced me into a position with the Time War where I... I and I'll give you the history of the Time War. Mm -hmm. Uh, did we ever speak about this before? We talked about it in the, in the, the Skype interview that we did. Okay. Uh, so a wee bit of background I think you gave to that. Well, I'll, I'll try and... Yeah, go I'll, for it. I'll re yeah. Re re you know, re refurbish it for people. So in 1995, I wrote a, 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 a screenplay 
uh, called Descent into the Maelstrom, which is about this Adolf Hitler type character who was uh, rewriting history and, you know, trying to become like a god or something. But it was, you know, it was a very strong uh, drama piece, shall we say. And, you know, had a little bit of... I put one or two little battles in there because back in the 90s, if you want to do a big battle, you got to pay for it. So yeah. I thought, okay, I put strategically, I put a nice opening... I put a battle in the middle and I had a nice climax at the end, nice VFX climax, but there was that was pretty much it. And back then that was ambitious. Yeah. Um, but I wrote it, never made it, uh, nearly made it a couple of times and things just never worked out right. And I finally just hit the point where I said, okay, I'm going to make it this year. And, uh, you know, we, we were looking for the right female actress. I say we, you know, producers and yeah. I. Um, and we settled up and I'm not going to name her. But I settled upon this female actress who had been on a TV series called Boy Meets World. Uh, and she was in White Chicks oh, as right. well. Okay. Um, you know, and you know, no, and, and it's funny, you know, she, she'd done a few things and she had a good look. And I met with her and her husband, who's also her manager. And uh, they seemed nice people mm. and, you know, very straight and you know, she seemed like she was going to be a good actress and, and a good representative of the film. And it was a very serious tone film. It wasn't just a, a throwaway piece of schlock. It yeah. was a really heavy character piece. Yeah. So, you know, you need to have your wits about you for this. And um, it all seemed to be going well. We built the sets and everything. And she said, oh, you don't mind if I, I uh, get my photographer in to do some photos, a press photo. So it's great go for it you know uh this is always good press yeah. you know meanwhile her husband who's who's you know was her manager as well and the, albeit he's he's not an industry professional uh he's a financial advisor or something or an accountant or something like that which is a great profession mm. but you know it's not the same world as as what you know we're in so he's running her career and and you know, he was on the phone saying, yes, yeah, she'll do anything for the camera, anything and all this sort of stuff. And I go, hmm, OK, well, I just need her to act and be professional. She's an amazing actress. And I believe, you know, she probably is. Yeah. So, you know, it was it was fair and reasonable. Now, um, so anyway, she, we're doing the photo shoot and stuff. Well, they, they are. And I'm just walking around and we did a costume fitting and, she, you know, she looked good. Um, and I walked around the corner and something she's got. She's on the uh, in the hospital the space hospital thingy that we have and she has a, her boobs out. And I go, Ooh, ooh gee. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, you know, it's not that I haven't seen boobs before, but yeah, yeah, this yeah. was a little bit odd. And she had a paparazzi photographer there who, you know, obviously was encouraging this and that's what he does and he makes money. And, and so then, and I, I was like saying to Tracy Birdsell, who was in the film and also one of the, um, you know, also helping me, well, yeah. producing it with me. And I said, I said well, this is kind of weird, you know, what's going on here? I th you know, because you have to do your due, due diligence. Um, before I'm going to pause on this point, let me backtrack a bit. When I did a movie called Humanity's End, uh, which is a very successful film, yeah, released yeah. in 22 territories, not my, again, not a big budget film, but, but did well. It's kind of like the poor man's Han Solo movie. Yeah, I like it. I've seen <laughs> it. I like it. Yeah. yeah it's, I'm, cool. it's a good film. There's a better version coming. Don't, better. don't you worry. Um, but... Um, we had this actress in there uh, who was who did a bit of softcore porn you know that, that sort of soft, that sort of yeah the, the, the soft lighting sort of slow, yeah, slow motion high quality yeah, stuff yeah. but you know if, if you're into that I'm not personally but she'd done that and we'd actually lost a few sales to different territories because she'd been a show, you know believe it or not they wouldn't buy the movie because she'd done this little bit of yeah this yeah. tasteful thing because they don't want to sell the movie to kids or to you know to the general audience if the actress has done a bit of you know sexy time yeah. stuff you know and that's just the business it's not my these aren't my choices so you know I, I know I'd lost a few sales because mm -hmm. of that and she didn't tell me have you got to be I, I, I kind of jumping in there because we, we talked a little bit about this kind of yesterday does it does this kind of affect you more than it affects say you know, the large companies in terms of 
an actress or an actor of their history, what what they've done before. You know, we talked about the James Gunn thing, you know, mm. yesterday. We were just sort of chatting between ourselves. Um, and, you know, how that could affect Disney in terms of what, what had happened or what they, what they reacted to him. Does that really have far more effect on you then? Because you've got tighter budgets, you've got an actress who could adversely affect everything that's that's happened with just one you know, past appearance. Have you got to be really careful? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? And I, 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 I can tell you why. I could tell you, give you an, uh, another example on those lines. Uh, current film that's out in the world, Rogue Warrior. Yeah. Okay, so we have been negotiating with the UK company to yeah. release it. And that has a, you know, a uh, romantic scene where you can see a bit yeah. of um, side it's, boot. It's, it's, it's tastefully done. Uh, it is, and you yeah. don't see a lot, but it's no, no, no. still a bit it's, sexy, you yeah, know? It's, yeah. Yeah. It's it's meant to be in the script. It's, yeah, it's part yeah, of it. Yeah. Um, and the UK company said, who still haven't come back to us on releasing it yet, but they said, uh, we love it. Can you cut out that scene? Really? Because, what? Well, okay, we, you know, limited market yeah. with, with selling a movie. So if we can cut that scene out, then we can sell it to more people. It can be rated... Uh, it can be rated for the whole family mm. to watch if we get rid of that scene and we can sell more units. And that's pretty much it. So, you know, when the market's really dying as it is, yeah. um, it's a choice, okay, you either cut that scene out and we'll sell it or you don't cut it out and we won't sell it at all in this territory. Okay. And that was a choice we were given. I said, of course I'll cut it out. So could you then include that though then as a kind of extra in, no. the, in the package? You're not allowed to even no. include it as a, the be- director's cut or whatever? Well, that could be another version they yeah, could buy right, overseas. Okay. Because, you could put it be- in that release. Well, you think about it, uh, you know, a, a 30-year-old mother is going to buy it for a 10-year-old son who's into sci-fi. She buys it for him. He says, puts it on and there's a... You know, there's a, a a sexy scene. Yeah. You know, and she's she then complains and takes it back and say, no, the rating's wrong. It should be rated M fifteen plus. So it means basically they can put it in Tesco and sell more copies. Is is this an, a new thing though, or is it as it's always been here? Because I, I remember if you go back to the original Star Wars films, mm-hmm. obviously Carrie Fisher in the original Star Wars films, she'd appeared in. Uh, there was a, one particular film where I remember, oh, uh, Hairspray with Warren Beatty, where she plays a young girl who kind of seduces him. And she's, she comes out with a line saying, do you want to F one? And she had a bit of a history in terms of the films that she'd been in. Mm. And that never seemed to affect, at the time, Star Wars. And yet now, what's happening with you? When, what, what year was that? What year was that? I mean... The, has, was Star Wars, 70. 77, 76, 77. It's, so, you it's know, the era. Yeah, it's a different time, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, look, I remember as a child watching television, um, turning on television and seeing softcore porn on television yeah. in that same time yeah, period. Yeah, yeah. They just, it's just the attitudes of people mm, have changed. Maybe. When you put a rating on there and it says, okay, you know, um, this has got to be appropriate for children. I mean, look at how the world has changed in the last, because of the, the, the um, Harvey Weinstein thing. Yeah. It's gone so PC, it's disgusting. You there know? are people, it seems to me, there are people waiting to be offended now. There yeah. are people online who, not just James Gunn is a prime example. You've got somebody who, who uh, and I can't remember the guy's name, but the right-wing blogger who made it his, it seems to be made it his intention to go after you know James Gunn. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, was, he said he was offended by what Gunn had said years ago in the jokes and that sort of thing. Um but it's not just people like him. It's people just and people have to say one thing, and sometimes it could be a slip of the tongue. Mm. It could be, you know, just a a figure of speech, and yet people are seem to just want to pounce, you know. And you can't say anything online. It doesn't matter if you're famous or not famous, but particularly if you're famous and well known. I think there's a couple, you may not have seen it because you've been travelling around the wilds mm. of Scotland the last few days. Bette Midler said something a couple of days ago about Bette Midler, Bette Midler put a mm. tweet out. Saying something, it's with related to the Kavanaugh hearings in America with the Judge Kavanaugh and, and that sort of thing, and she rela- she quoted um, John Lennon, New Yorker owner's "Woman is the Negro of the World." <gasps> You're kidding! I know um, she said that. Yeah, she said that. Now that was a song back in what seventy two, seventy three by Lennon and the Plastic Ono band, and it was called "Woman is the Negro of the World." Back then, I don't think there was a first made, but she put that in a tweet quoting, and my God, she has been absolutely pilloried on Twitter and that sort of thing because it's you, there's something there's certain things now which you just 
you just cannot do. You can't, you've got to be really careful. The land of the free. The land of the free. And also, you know, um, you know whether or not you meant it, you know, it doesn't matter how you mean these things these days. It's it's what's said. It's, it, it seems to be more important in what's said in, in in rather than what's meant by what's been said. You know how you say something is more important than what you're actually saying. And, you know, and I, I think it's 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 unfortunate, isn't it? Yeah, and I'm sure they'll look back at this time in history and say, oh boy, that was the PC. <laughs> I mean, S- South Park predicted it. If you look yeah, at the new yeah, South Park, they've yeah. got principal PC, and it's like interesting. And they were starting doing this a few years ago, and it's getting worse and worse. I I. I know and this will be a point in history where they'll, they'll almost make fun of it. Yeah. For sure. And I'm sure it'll figure itself out eventually. I think um, so. But I, you know, I mean, I was, you know, the James Gunn thing. Mm. Uh, Sydney, uh, Disney did not, they of course knew about yep. this. And I think when they hired him, the PC, the PC police were not, you know, on, on, on force. Yeah. And all of a sudden, everything's changed, and I think, and I, I, you know, I, I don't see. I st- honestly, I think they're afraid that people would would boycott the movie, mm. um, because he wasn't, you know, because he said some weird shit. And, mm. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> There's the cuss word I promise not to say. I'm terribly sorry. He said some, re- you know, weirdly offensive things, which obviously was a joke. That his intentions were not not. You know, incorrect. Yeah. I mean, you know, go after somebody who murders somebody, please, but don't go after somebody who has a slip of the tongue like I just did, because yeah. it's just what it is. Exactly. And he had a slip of Twitter. Yeah. Um, but you know, it, it's kind of turned backwards on on on, and people will purposely not pay to see mm. Guardians of the Galaxy three because of you know there there will be people who will boycott the movie. Well, I know people now who said quite openly that they will not go and watch it because he's been removed. You know, so you've got mm. you've got the the other side of these mm. things now. Do you ever film anything and and think now, should I be filming this or is this going to be be forced on me to have cut? Does that impact on the way that you film or write anything? Yes. <laughs> well, okay, another story, and I'll get back to the time yeah, war yeah, story sorry, after that. But no, no, there is in fact you you've t- touched on something. There was a scene in, in Rogue Warrior that I wrote uh, that was knowing that Sony were probably going to release the mm. film that and put it in Walmart, you know, which should have been worth a, a lot of money. Yeah. Um, there was a scene that I was encouraged not to shoot that was so graphically violent and... Uh, you know, I get it. I you know because if we don't want. I I would rather not. I would rather young children see a pair of breasts and not see violence, mm-hmm. because they were looking at breasts when they came out of the you know the mother's womb for a few weeks anyway. So breasts are okay, yeah. and they 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 came out of a woman's vagina. So, you know that's a bit silly to get over. And I get it. You know, it's, it's young boys going through sexual mm-hmm. changes is 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 an issue, uh, and they can get a little out of control when they see these things, but. Um, if you if you demonise something, <laughs> it makes it even more forbidden well, and anxiety. And also compared to what you can now see on the internet, anyway, it's you know it's yeah. mild stuff. What whatever you're going to put in a film in terms of boobs or whatever is going to be mild compared to what anybody can go online and Google in a particular term, and that's it. You know exactly. Well, I mean, I had I had the issue of about a, a violent scene, yeah, a brutal scene that I felt. I didn't feel, but other people felt, and I, you know, went along with it that we we shouldn't shoot. Um, that being said, now that I'm retooling Rogue Warrior, mm. and I'll explain that one later, mm-hmm. uh, into a television series, that scene's going back in. Right. And okay. that scene is in the process of being planned as we speak. Okay. Uh, and it's, it's something. It's something <laughs> it's, it's a lot of blood <laughs> um you know and i'm excited about it i'm truly excited about it because it's it's the freedom you know yeah um so yeah you know there have been moments in humanity's end another another situation where i was given i wrote the script there was a lot more character driven stuff in mm. it uh a lot more and especially with durasi the, the lead character if you haven't seen the movie he's the hand solo of yeah, the yeah, film yeah, yeah. And I, I did a backstory with his father and he actually, you know, have a scene with his father and stuff. And it probably would have made people love his character a bit more yeah. than they did. And again, I was encouraged to cut that out and instead put an action sequence, a big action sequence at the start. Um, 
so when I do a new version of that film soon, I'm probably going to reinstate, a re- shoot uh, a young Durasi, you know, in a situation in the movie uh, with his father and setting it up a bit, setting up his character yeah. and maybe remove that battle sequence at the okay. start and changing yeah. it a bit. So I, I am going to fix those problems because I, a good, another good example on that point is I did a movie called uh, Death Machine which was a British film, which yeah. you haven't seen. I have not seen that. It was also called Doomsday, because it got renamed, uh, which is to confuse people even more that Neil Marshall directed a <laughs> movie called Doomsday. Right. Neil Johnson directed a movie called Doomsday as yeah. well. And I don't know why they did this, but that's whatever. But now Neil Johnson is directing Crononaut, and Crononaut is the same film, except it's, it's done the way I wrote it. Right, okay. And there's no you know, space action sequence at the start. And everyone who's seen it, including this, my sales agent said it's a much better film. You've done a much better job. This, mm. And it's like, yeah, I wrote it that way. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I got, some, I got something right. And that's, you know, that's how it is. Um, so that being the point on all of that, uh, yeah, you, you kind of, you kind of, I, 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 I like the fact that the more, uh, f- not famous, but more, <laughs> legendary i become in in and i put that in very inverted <laughs> commas the more I, I i can be myself and yeah. get away with things because you know there's a lot of pressure in the early days yeah. to, to do things as the distributors demanded it so do you get more freedom then as as, as producing something for tv because obviously you've got rogue warrior got you know um number of projects that are going to be morphed into a tv version does that give you more freedom than it in terms of films, or is it the opposite way around? Well, I it used to be to, you do television. It's like oh boy, it's going to be yeah, you got yeah. your fingers around your neck trying to make it. But TV's a new. It's, it's now changed. Everybody where, where wants to be, isn't it? Game of Thrones has, yeah. has changed that. You know, I remember my roommate's sister once years ago was running around saying, "I saw a penis on television." She was so excited <laughs> on Game of Thrones, and she was like talking about, "I saw another one," and I saw another one, and I thought, "Oh, interesting." Um, and there was a bit of glee about that. So people are celebrating, you know, uh, program, you know, streaming television yeah. by putting the kitchen sink in. Yeah. And, uh, you know, The Handmaid's Tale is, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, when you really think what's going on there, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's pretty... Uh, it's you know. brutal stuff. I yeah. mean, it is. It's yeah. emotionally and physically kind of brutal is that? And, and there seems to be I think we will look back on, on this era just as an outside person looking in as a kind of golden era of, of TV with the streaming opportunities now oh, yes. and everything that's coming around because you've got the big stars wanting to be in TV series now you've got people that would never have looked at you know, would look down on television don't want to do that sort of thing back in the 70s or 80s now queuing up to show their face Anthony, Anthony Hopkins you know character you know character actors Big names wanting to yeah. appear in that sort of thing, doing some quite extreme stuff, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, you know, that, that being said, uh, I haven't yet seen the quality, you know, they're kind of movie-like stuff, mm. but I've never seen the epic performances. Like, okay, you, Anthony Hopkins is a really good example. I still haven't seen his legendary performance from Silence of the Lambs portrayed mm. in a TV show. Okay. You know, it's still been a bit constricted and I'm trying to step away from that. And it's funny, the new television series is, it's not really television, the mm. streaming series yeah. is uh, becoming the new movie. Yeah. And the movie is becoming the television because the movie market's shrinking and the television yeah. market's expanding. So we can throw it out there. And that's kind of how it's impacted on the time war. Yeah. Which now I'll continue that story. Let's get back to the time <laughs> where we started. It's a good one. Um, so anyway, it was called this. The originally was is meant to be a movie called Descent to the Maelstrom, and you know, as I mentioned, there was this actress who was taking her top off, and you know, she, you know, I was like, ooh, interesting, but what's going on yeah. here? Hmm. Um, Next minute, the the press comes out, and I believe it was the Daily Mail and a few other press outlets. God bless them. Yeah. Well, well I actually I find them interesting. Yeah. Um, they said, you know, uh, whatever her name is, yeah. and I'm just saying this because I don't want to promote her because, you know, she does enough promotion yeah. of herself. Um, uh, is, blah, 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 is now appearing in the porn version of Interstellar. No. And this is my movie. You know, Descent of the Maelstrom, yeah. the porn version of Interstellar. And it's like, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah. You know, you're trying to be a class act and you're being called, called a porn film. And it, before you've even come, you know, shot yeah. a frame of footage. Yeah. 
and it's not a porn film. There's not even a moment of porn in there, but God bless them. That was a good headline. Yeah. Um, but you know, so I, I, you know, I, I rang up her, her manager husband, who was obviously guiding her career expertly. Yeah. And I use that in inverted <laughs> commas, uh, and said, look, I'm sorry. You know, and I really was heartbroken, truly heartbroken, because I had great hopes for her. I'm sorry, but you know, this, 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 this nudie stuff, you start, you're, you're pushing her down, uh, is wrong. And it's, it, you know, it's great. I understand you want to be her like the Kat, Kim Kardashian, but she ain't, she's supposed to be a serious, serious mm-hmm. actress. You're destroying her career and I'm sorry, I can't, I have to fire you with, with the humblest respect. I cannot use, you know, your, your wife. Um, and he was, you know, he was saying, well, it's, it's bliss, that blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, that's fine. Um, and then there were, you know, a few weeks later, there were, there were Twitter attacks against, um, the producers of the film, which we trace back to the husband. It was so obvious. <laughs> he was so stupid, you know, to do this. And, it, and then this, this actress has gone on to do porn stuff Yeah. and it's not even good porn. It's, it's horrendous porn and i you know like it's not good so did you manage to kind of then nip that in the bud because obviously you've been in the daily mail so that's it's out yeah. there already and it's probably still online i guess somewhere you could you know have oh, a I'm, look I'm, yeah. but did you did that kind of cut off the snake's head even though you had then to deal with the twitter abuse and the attacks it was better that way than obviously for the carried on because then there's no coming back once the film's out and she's in the film and that sort of thing exactly yeah. well we we, we cast uh, you know somebody else in the role very quickly and i mean it put it put me it nearly just dist- thank god we found out then and not later yeah exactly that's what it, I was it would have yeah. it would have would have killed the, the movie and i mean i know these these the manager and and the the the, the actress didn't get this because she's now engaging in the most horrendous uh, career destroying porn I've yeah. ever seen and I'm sure they think it's a good idea yeah. but it's really not yeah. and it's embarrassingly bad for these people because you know you want, anyway well, um, I mean if, if James Gunn is going to be fired for telling a few jokes then you know having a porn career is not exactly going to be it just you know, up there is well, it well the head like the press would have killed it before yeah. the movie came yeah. out and it, because and she's engaging in this stuff that's fine but hey you should tell somebody, hey, I do porn. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to do porn. I'm about to launch my porn career. You know, kind of warn people. It's, yeah. it's not cool. And I, you know, I know for stupid people, yeah, she, she's got a million likes. It's, it's not the likes you want. Mm-hmm. You know, it's tainted. And none of those people who like, you know, your porn would go out and buy the movie. Yeah. Because they'll be yeah. expecting more porn, but better lit. Yeah. yeah. They won't get it. And then they'll be angry. Yeah. And I, I don't want that. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, that being the point, then we, you know, we, we renamed the movie renamed at the edge of time mm-hmm. and it all went down and and realized that i had truly true gold with tracy birdsell who's an amazing actress she's brilliant and i mean i'm so, telling you and then she just kept pushing herself more and more and it's like man the, the character in this i decided to expand the character right. a bit um and a bit more and a bit more and it's like then we did finish rogue warrior put that movie on hold because i was so traumatized for the porn stuff yeah i didn't know what to do so yeah. i just took a breather and then I got back to it and then we started shooting more and more and more and more and to the point where we shot about 200, 260 days. And it was just like uh, another situation occurred during that movie where uh, it's in the press, you know, where, uh, you know, I won't talk about it, Tracy Birdsell situation, which was quite horrendous. But again, it was good therapy mm-hmm. for her to keep mm-hmm. shooting and good therapy for me to keep <laughs> shooting. Um, we just started getting, a, we were both firing off each other yeah. so well. Yeah. I mean, you kind of, and I kept writing more, and I said, Tracy, you know, I've had, all my whole life I had this dream about Hitler um, on a cross. <laughs> As you do. <laughs> being crucified. And, I do, you know, it's not that I, I, you know, I wasn't demonizing him or anything. It was just this stuff in my head. And then, you know, um, and I thought, I'm just going to explore what my inner, inner crea- creation and I'm just going to run with it. And I kept running with it. And I've been running and running and running. And I've got more visual and, and more visual. And then we shot 30 days in the UK, you know, and it was getting bigger and bigger. And I mean, at this point, you've got to have realised this is not going to be a film anymore. Well, this is not, this is I not thought movies. it was two. No, I really thought it was yeah. going to be two movies. And, it's like, and then it was just keep going and going. And then, the, you know, the Hitler stuff turned out so good. Yeah. And then we, we got Hitler into the movie. And then... Um, you know, and I will say this now, you know, it's got this guy called Cyrano in it 
who's played by William Kircher and another two other actors, yeah. by the way. William is great, isn't he? he William's a yeah. oh, wonderful just, guy. Yeah. And he, you know, the other actors were great too. Yeah. Um, they brought it to life in different ways. But I realized this is the, you know, this is, this is a vo- version of Hitler, uh, genetically modified. So who's playing Hitler, can you say? Who's... Stephen Manley's playing right, Hitler. Right, okay. And you'll know him from Star Trek Three. the... Oh, he plays Spock's son, yeah. He's young Spock. No, 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 he's young Spock. Young Spock, on the planet when they went yeah. to the... Yeah, he only got a few, you know, a few minutes, but he's Pong Fa Spock. He was in Robot Warriors as well, wasn't as he? As well, yeah. yeah, and he's a lovely guy. Um, I did think... He's been through some turmoil lately, the God bless him, but I he's wonderful. I just think he could have been probably used more in Rogue Warrior. I thought his character in Rogue Warrior was really good. I really enjoyed it. I, yeah. I did think it was slightly, if I could say so, slightly underused in the film. Yeah, I would say that. And I look backing onto that film quickly again. Yeah. We had this other actress we hired um, originally to play a, you know, a, a role in the film. And uh, she was a born again Christian. I don't know why. If I had a lot of problems with born again Christians, they're not reliable people, and they just, you know, I don't know why. Yeah. As act- actors, they're not good, and I, they they're good actors, but they're just not good as reliable people. And I cannot figure this out why. Um, I didn't know she was, and if I knew that, then I would have gone. Ooh. Um, but you know, we wanted to shoot some extra stuff. Yeah. And then she just igno- ignored us completely. Uh, you know, she just wanted a day on set. That's all she wants. She wants some money, I right, guess, and right. that was it. And we couldn't get her back. And then she was just, uh, you know, just very unreliable as a human being. So we had to reshoot a bunch of stuff and change a bunch of stuff. Gotcha. And, right. and she had a lot of scenes with Stephen Manley, which I had to get rid of. Right, right. So, you know, there was stuff that was, I had no choice. And, and you know, she, through her actions, not so, you know, I just wanted her for another hour on set. Yeah. That's all I wanted. And she just didn't want to. I don't know where she was. Where I just to this day, I don't know where she's gone to. She's disappeared. That's sure, when you've got to get rid of stuff, good stuff with one other yeah. actor as well. She yeah. was a great actress. Yeah. You know, and it wasn't anything wrong. There was no bad vibes or anything. It's just people are flakes. And she was another sad, you know, so Jesus obviously, obviously spoke to her and said, stay away from Neil Johnson. Uh, yeah, and Hitler maybe. And well. Hitler. Yeah. So, <laughs> so how, how's he approached, or how did you want him to approach the part of, of Hitler? It, well, I mean, it, you, the guy's been played a lot, hasn't he? Um, yeah. You know, and sometimes it can be nailed, and then sometimes it can be. <laughs> we, we did nail Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> but what about in terms of the portrayal? Uh, what sort of portrayal are you looking for? Is it a kind of cartoony version, or are you wanted it to be? Can you say? Okay. Yeah. No. Definitely not cartoony. Uh, and I'll give you an example of what I I don't like. Uh, and I'm you know Inglorious Bastards. Yeah. Um, which, by the way, it had a right a certain tone, which I thought was appropriate mm-hmm. for that movie but they portrayed hitler as a this this loud mouth guy nine 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 mm-hmm. nine and blah, blah, blah. it was like you know and it was it, that was a certain flavor and i'd seen another movie where it was just showing hitler in day-to-day life mm-hmm. i didn't want a cartoon pastiche yeah. of hitler i wanted a human being mm-hmm. And even with Stephen Manley, and this is, you know, you wanted more of him, well, you're going to get more of him in, in another <laughs> film. Um, but uh, there's more of him and more of William Kircher in The Time War, cool. like shockingly, cool. a huge amounts. But, um, you know, he, he, he was going to do the German accent, and I said, I don't want to do a German accent. Because yeah, it's ask if it a does moment it. you do that, you start going into cartoon territory. Yeah, well, exactly. And I said, just speak almost clean you know just speak clean and straight i want you to be real because and i've had this problem okay on a movie called i did called starship um i had an actor again i won't name him but you know he's a nice guy mm-hmm. um uh who decided insisted on doing an american accent and he's not american now unless you've got a dialogue coach on set you shouldn't really pull this off yeah. you know what i mean i've had this problem and i begged him uh, in the beginning i said please can you do british he said no i want to do an american i was going oh Okay, do an American accent. Um, what happens is when you put on an accent, it restricts your acting. It restricts your natural flow of dialogue and your ability to emote in a real way. Because mm-hmm. you know when you're doing low budget movies, you're having to pull on quick stuff, mm-hmm. and you don't have the time to really work on you know this and that. So you're pulling on easy stuff. Yeah. When you've got a, your own accent, you're not having to think about voice, and you can focus on the character more. And so, unfortunately because he was focusing so much on his, his accent and it wasn't always perfect, but it was okay. Actually, he did a good job. Uh, I'll be honest. He did a good job, but it, it, because he was moving his mouth in a different way, it gave him weird f- facial right, quirks. Right. And I don't think the audience um, accepted him completely 
because he wasn't being real. And mm. it's a pity because he was surrounded by some other actors who weren't very good. Mm. Some were. Mm -hmm. Some were great and some weren't. And, uh, you know, but because he was the leader of the whole thing, it kind of pulled the whole movie down. But, I, you know, I'm still very proud of it. Yeah. And I was very proud of his performance. But I felt he, you know, uh, could have brought a little bit more had he had his own accent. And um, I have seen him act with his own accent and he really is an amazing actor yeah. much more than in my in starship so you know i probably blame myself i should have been harder on him and said no nope, get rid of that american accent speak your own voice and do it well would you be much harder now than you were then because i mean that's a few yeah. years ago now so oh I, I would have learned from i would have just yeah because you know he was a well-trained actor mm. as well and i just thought okay i i don't have the right to tell an actor how to do their job because i am not an actor mm. But I knew what I knew, and I should have trusted my instincts yeah. and, and pushed him on that. And it's just a lesson of life, you know. Come on. So you you you've got about what twenty thousand million hours worth now of of filming that you've 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 been traveling around Scotland and 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 Britain sort of and Europe as well, sort of doing lots of filming stuff. So yeah, well, I needed some extra pickup scenes yeah. because of the injury in my hand. I, I was like, what do I do? I can, you know, stay around America and just twiddle my thumbs, but I'm not even allowed to twiddle the thumbs. Yeah, yeah. Or I could go and shoot some of the extra coverage I wanted for the time war, which would include, you know, this and that. I mean, there's a massive Titanic submarine battle, you know, in the, in the mist. Yeah. And guess what? It's misty in Scotland. <laughs> So I figured, you know, I'm going to come where it's raining. I've seen a lot of the pictures that you've been posting, and 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 it's it's been very wet, it's been very misty, it's looked very cold. I mean, we've got. I'm just looking out the window now. It's not too bad today. Yesterday was nice. Mm. It was a nice day. But yes, but you've had some challenging weather conditions to film in. I I was okay. I mean, seriously, I was filming. I mean, I I'm surprised I'm not sick. Yeah. Um, I was filming in, uh, oh God. 50 mile an hour winds and torrential rain where it just was non-stop and I was soaked to the bone. Yeah. I, I bought socks. I've been going through like three pairs of socks a day because <laughs> they get wet and I've been waterlogged and, but I've taken my camera out and shoot with it. I've just, I, thankfully the camera's weather sealed so it's been doing yeah. good. It does have an umbrella but it's been, I've been shooting in the rain and it's terrible because you shoot for two minutes and the camera's, the lens is covered in, in rain. And I've been trying everything not to, I've been positioning myself backwards to avoid the rain. And I'm getting footage. Yeah. And it looks bleak, but, you know, it's not that much. Mm -hmm. um, but it's working. Yeah. Very slowly it's working. And then I have, you know, the, the expensive drone thingy. Yeah. Uh, which, I, and seriously, I swear to God, I put it up. It was in the air for 30 seconds, bing, big bat, water drip on it, <laughs> land it down, clean it up, put it up, 30 seconds, boom. But I got the shots, yeah. just. Yeah. And it was legendarily godlike you know, footage. Uh, and I'm now actually going to figure out, I'm going to probably go back there and shoot more. Um, begging Tracy Birdsell to come over, because uh, she's dealing with some other business stuff right yeah. now. And I mean, I'm begging for her to come over. So look, I have found this location. Okay, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, I'm not going to say where it is. So I found this weird Nazi castle-y thing hospital thing um and it's quite amazing and it's uh i said this is like better than any movie set i've ever seen i need to shoot here and you need to get over <laughs> here and it's incredible i will show you photos yeah, later and yeah. i can't talk about it just yet because i don't i don't think yeah, it's yeah, yeah. we're not allowed to film there okay. it is illegal to enter this but there's a way you can get in there without any problems and it's what it is so i i'm just obsessed you know it's like oh, i can i don't need this scene but i want the scene yeah, yeah. And there's, it's an eight hour movie, basically, which means it's season one of the Time War. <laughs> it's a television series. <laughs> God bless it all. Um, you know, and that's, that's what it is. Yeah. It's been such a journey. I mean, so much has happened in this movie. We've had, um, we've had a, you know, a rape situation by a famous person. Mm -hmm. We've had a you know another situation where another actor was was physically beaten um you know in and around yeah. this and some other stuff that went down and almost a suicide yeah uh we we i mean this list goes on and on and on we've had another the actress who was suddenly doing porn mm. decided she had a porn career all of a sudden it went and by the way this this movie would have made her career guaranteed yeah, yeah. guaranteed it would have revitalized her career but instead she decided to do porn um and, uh, you know, and I'm just saying that because I, I know enough about the project. Yeah. 
you know, another actor who, who after the film, I think he, and I, I don't know to this day, you know, I'm, in his own mind he knows, but he won't, he won't ever to, he refuses to talk to me because the character he played, I think, went to his head in the sense that he played it so well that he became the character a little wow. bit okay. and won't even talk to me. Um, yet, you know, it, it breaks my heart because I've actually never done anything against him and yeah. I'll never talk bad about this guy. But he won't even talk to me anymore, and I don't know whether that has happened. And, and you know, another actor is forbidden to talk to me because it sent him round the twist, playing the, the, the you know it's that intense. Yeah, it's that intense. Uh, this film, it's it's a cursed movie in the sense of the Omen or Jaws. Well, we've got, was, we've got uh, as well Christopher Lee, as well who, you know, yeah. um, I think we're allowed to say that. Obviously, did yeah. some work for it, and then you've killed Christopher Lee off as 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 well. Um, well, I didn't kill him off. No, <laughs> no look, he, and that that's a that's a good story. You know, I knew Christopher Lee years ago, and I did a a music video with him where he was singing with the band Rhapsody of Fire with an orchestra and I, stuff. I I hadn't put those, those two together when we we're talking uh, yesterday. And I, I remember him doing the the metal album because it was a big fuss in in well, you know, in, the, in the papers wasn't it you know at the time. I, I had nothing to do with that heavy metal album yeah, he yeah. did but he did that as a result yeah. of um he did that as a result of me and him and rhapsody not me and him but you know him working Doing with rhapsody, work with rhapsody yeah. and, and he got the taste for heavy metal <laughs> and i started that i feel i know it was my idea <laughs> Because I said to Rhapsody, why don't you just ask him to sing? If, you, if you're going to have one claim to fame in life, I got Christopher Lee into heavy metal. I mean, there's not much better than that, is there, really? You know. Well, that that was a story, and I know everyone's going to claim it, that was them. But I, you know, I know that I know it's no big deal. But look, we, he did a voiceover for Rhapsody. Yeah. And they were just over the moon. And then he was talking, and he said, and he said, and I mean, I was there. I've had, by the yeah. way, the camera was rolling, yeah. so this is why I know it's a fact. He says, you know I can sing, don't you? And they, they all look at him, and they're, they're Italian, and they go, what? Yes, and he starts singing this opera song. La, 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 la. Oh, my God. And I looked at the, the band, and they were like, oh, wow. And I said, and I said, Alex, why don't you get him to sing on the album, on the next album? You should do this. Was this said off the, just as a joke or did no, you? No, no, no. no. I, I saw dollar signs, I'm sorry to say. And I said this, you know, so you should, and I thought, you should get him to sing. And they said, oh, this, do you think it's possible? You know, and they, they were telling us, really? I said, yeah. And then they mentioned it to, to Joey, who was yeah. the, from Manowar. And then I guess maybe Joey probably thought it was his idea. But I know I said it to them. And I said, you've got to do this. This will be the coolest thing on the planet if you get him to do some opera. And he, and he sung some opera. And... um you know straight opera with rhapsody and with an orchestra yeah. and we shot the whole music video in uh literally under under an hour because you know he was getting a bit frail in 2005 mm -hmm. and couldn't mm -hmm. stand up for too long yeah. and and you know and he you know, he would make jokes with me that the americans wouldn't get and the americans thought they he was trying to make fun of me but he was actually taking the piss in a funny way yeah, and yeah, say, oh you're yeah. this and that and, yeah. like, oh. and then he the, the americans would go crazy and say Oh no no no, Mister Lee, it's okay. Blah blah blah. No. And he would look at me. It's like they don't get it. They were making a joke. <laughs> so he was always having these jokes with me, and nobody would realize this yeah. because Americans were just too on the edge about yeah. it. And he was a sweet man. And you know, at the end, he did. We we're in Abbey Road Studios, and you know, um, I was nice enough that you know the guys from Joey from Manor was helped set it up yeah. or set it up for me, where Mister Lee could do the voiceover and. You know, it was a wonderful thing Joey did for me mm. in that, you know, and it probably ended up being the last uh, voiceover, the last movie appearance, voice like appearance. one of the last things he did must be. Yeah, this will be the last thing that Mr. Lee will ever be known for right. is my movie, uh, which is a great thing. Yeah. You know, and I'm... I'm so, you know, I, it's not that I had any, and I, I, you know, he was so frail the last time I saw him. Yeah. I didn't think it'd be like, I thought it, maybe this would be the last time I see him. Yeah. He was so sweet to me because we just hung out the voiceover booth for 20 minutes and he kept making jokes to me and he was, he looked at the script and said, this is more than one movie, isn't it? <laughs> he looked at me and said, Rumble. And I, I mean, it's all on camera and I, I, I have a lot of footage of this and I just said, mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, and he just started reading. <laughs> he, he knew what I was doing. 
Um, and he also, you know, he gave me instructions not to mention it to his manager because whatever, I did, yeah. that's his business. It's yeah. not to do with me. Um, and he signed a little piece of paper. Okay. I have permission. And um, that was it. So that's there. That's it. That's there somewhere to yeah. see the light of day. In, in... It will see the light of day. Yeah. And, and out of respect, he, he was a, a killer of Nazis. Yeah. He was a Nazi hunter, shall we say, in the sense that he did serve in the war. And, he and did, yeah, yeah. He was a vicious killing machine. Yeah. In movies too. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't, he, wasn't he in... I'm maybe mixing him up with somebody else. Wasn't he in like um, uh, the version of the kind of wartime commandos or SAS or something? Yes. Don't seem to remember. He was he was he knew how to kill a person um, yeah. in a number of ways. Yeah, and I, I don't know if he ever took a life, but I suspect he did because it was always a little bit of a point where he wouldn't want to talk about it. Yeah. Then. Um, but it was with a heavy heart. But he he did at least have that possibility, and and he was a big guy, so you know imagine. <laughs> this guy coming after you and you you know and, and it's like he definitely and you know with great respect because of people like him mm. you know we have England is still England yeah uh, you know the yeah. British Isles is, are not under Nazi occupation uh, to this day because of people like him so you know that's why he, his last legacy is a film about Hitler and I think he'd appreciate that because it's with you know it's done with respect and love yeah and you know uh I, you know, I, I'm thankful to this day because I'm, I'm a small guy. It's funny. He kept saying to me, and it's, I've been told this twice, two people have said this to me and I don't get it. But he said, you know, as, as, well, the first time I directed him, he, he said, I said, that was perfect. Can we do it again? And he said, if it's perfect, why should I do it again? <laughs> <laughs> and, and the Americans were going crazy. Oh, no, no, no. And it's like, he just looked at me like this <laughs> with a smile. <laughs> I mean, come on. He was joking, but they didn't realize. Yeah. And then later on, I said, can we do it once more, please, sir? You're just like Peter Jackson. Which was a compliment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, in his weird way. And he was making a point. See, the Brits can. We, we can. The, the self-depreciating humour. We can take the mickey out of ourselves. We can also say things to each other. Which It's like when you do when you're a kid with your mates. Yeah. You call your mates the biggest things on the, you know your yeah. son, you know your mum's this your dad's this but we don't we don't mind it whereas I, I don't think and I've got quite a few American friends myself they don't sometimes seem to get that when I say something about myself that's kind of like putting myself down but in a funny way yeah they'll say oh no you, sh- you should back yourself a wee bit more well, no actually I was just I was just it was just a joke it yeah. wasn't it wasn't meant I don't really think I'm the worthless piece of <laughs> crap that I've just said I was, you know. Um, but they don't sometimes just seem to get it, do they? And do you find that a lot with, because you've got the Aussie, you've got the Brit side of things, mm-hmm. do you find yourself being misunderstood a lot when you're trying to be funny and they don't just understand? I, I misunderstood everywhere I am, ex- <laughs> except in England, which is why I like being here. Yeah. See, I, you know, I grew up in, I was born in England, uh, born in Bournemouth, yeah. uh, Southampton South- actually, yeah. lived in Bournemouth and moved up to Yorkshire. Uh, and... Then I moved to Australia. Now, I'm a British person, and I imagine this young little British boy, very well spoken. Uh, I was the target of racist abuse, mm. constant, uh, for many years. And it was horrible. I mean, physical bullying and stuff. And I mean, you know, I get racism because I was a, raci- a target yeah. of racism. Yeah. I know it doesn't make sense because I'm white and they were mm. white. And we, ha- we almost speak the same. And most people can't tell the difference. But to the Australian people, the British were the enemy in the sense that, you know, these are the people we fight yeah. against in the cricket and the football yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so but if they want to target abuse at somebody and there's no other types around they would target the british young british boy yeah. who was shorter than them so yeah and i had to learn to fight and then i learned to develop an accent i started to sp- one day i thought i have to speak australian to be accepted so i suddenly i slowed down the way i speak and Good day, how you going? Yeah, all right. And I, I said, I've got to become lazy and slow and speak, not lazy, but slow and speak like this and go up on my sentence. All right. And uh, yeah, how you doing, mate? Yep, all right, beauty. And I went from being British to Australian yeah. and to be accepted and kind of worked. Yeah. I stopped, the, the racism stopped. So, you know, that's... But that's the, you know, you, you, yeah. you still have a, I was brought up British and I have the British humour and Monty Python and everything. Yeah. And I moved back to England at some point, back and forth. So um, I've had that sort of, you know, world. And that's why I like Christopher Lee is because he was just one of the boys, you yeah. know, one of the British boys. And he was so sweet to me because yeah. I didn't come on nervous because I directed a million famous people for him. 
and I was just like, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, I just love sitting, listening to him. And I was, he was so nice to me. And that's, you know, and then William Kirchhoff, said, I tried this and this and this. And, can, you know, he said, and he, it's, it's the weirdest thing. He said, this is, you're just like Peter Jackson. He said the same thing to me. And it's, and it's like, <laughs> you know, that's the second time I've heard that from someone. <laughs> and he was in The Hobbit. Um, yeah. I don't think, I don't know, I don't see it. You know, I, I don't, I'm not like Peter Jackson. I guess maybe the way I speak or what I do, we have a similar energy. What's Kircher like to work with William Kircher? Because I, he, I've spoken to William quite a few times now. We, we did a, he did a conversation with me for the, the, the YouTube channel. Uh, and he was walking around the Hollywood Hills with his phone and he was chatting, we were chatting away. And we spent more time talking about 70s TV than anything. Oh, Big yeah. fans of the $6 million man and all this stuff. He seems like a wee bit of a... I think a bit of a troll maker, is he, Kircher? He's a wee bit of a... He's got a glint in his eye, hasn't he? He's got a wee bit of a... He likes his... I think he likes to have a wee bit of fun on set. You, you'd you know, think you so. You keep your thumb down with No, Kircher. actually not. Yeah. Believe it or not, no, no, he's the opposite. He's a, he's a big professional on yeah. set. Um, and he's really, you know... He, he's like He's got his way, he wants to do it, and that's it. And I like to push him, and I, I trick him into a little thing sometimes to get a different site, different performance. Yeah. But... You know, in in reality, he knows what he's good at, and he sh he just sticks with it, and it's like, it's gold. Yeah. Um. That being said, I know I've got some of his greatest performances on on camera, uh. And I mean, it's it's to come. You know. Yeah. Uh, sure. In a couple of films. Um, and so that being said, you know he's, he's so interesting to watch, and when when something works, you don't mess with it, and it, with him. No, on set he's just. Well, I think he's you, on. You said to me some time ago before I was due to speak to William. I said I was about to speak to William, and you'd said that he'd done some of the you didn't recently a scene with him and Tracy, I think, where you said it was the best work that either of them have ever done. I don't know if you can remember what the scenes were, but you said it was some incredible work that both of them had done. Um, yeah, well, that's what I discovered. This is that you know, um, there's a weird chemistry they have. Now, I, don't, I haven't encountered this much in life. And I work, again, I work with yeah. a lot of actors, but the two of them have this weird-ass chemistry and I cannot put my finger on it. And that's why I started capitalizing on, <laughs> on it more and more during the Time War and a little bit in the you know, Evolution War TV series yeah. um, uh, where they just bounce off each other and it's like, it's weird. They just connect in the weirdest-ass way. Um, you know, it's just they're both consummate professionals. Yeah. And it's funny with Tracy, you know, I mean, it's fine. I never forget, you know, we're out having a lunch meeting or something and, you know, Matthew McConaughey's wife approached Tracy and said, you know, my husband follows everything you do. He's, he thinks you're incredible. You know, as an example, yeah. I know there's yeah. so many actors and I, you know, I'm not going to name drop a million of them, but there's a lot. I don't mean a, a, a ton of actors, major actors, yeah. Oscar winners, who are watching her yeah. and watching what she yeah. does and are fascinated with her and want to work with her. They're just waiting for the right moment. <laughs> you know, just thinking, <laughs> meanwhile, I'm... And, you know, whatever you've seen from her, it's nothing compared to what's to come. You know, and I mean, she put herself in, in the hospital because it was so intense in the time war. She yeah, really did. I remember you saying, yeah. And I was in England, and that's why I said to her, okay, here's your therapy, woman. <laughs> Get on a plane, come to England, you know, come for a holiday, I said to her. And she booked a flight for 30 days in the UK. Did you do some filming? 29 of those 30 days, the camera was rolling. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I, the holiday didn't happen. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a thing. I know, you know, just, I mean, I, see, the problem is it was middle of winter time, so we only had five hours of sunlight. Yeah. So, you know, maybe three hours of shooting, really, <laughs> honestly. Um, so, you know, they went full days and the rest of the time we were just, you know, e Indian food and yeah. I don't know. I think we just slept. I mean, I, we, I mean, you know, I'm yeah. sure she did, but I don't know what the rest of the time is dry. Actually, no, I'm sorry. The rest of the time is driving from location yeah, yeah, and yeah, finding yeah. an Indian food place or something. Yeah. So, you know, it was kind of fun and, uh, it was kind of a whirlwind thing. Um, and it was funny as hell, but that's how the time war was really, you know, born out into yeah. something. Um, you know, when we started shooting in real castles and burnt out churches and stuff and, and uh um, you know, it's weird. Yeah. It's it's gone so so weird. And I you know, I don't know what to say so about it's, it. So it's gonna be a series. Do we uh, do you have a projected <laughs> time yeah. of when that might see the light of day or when 
general public might get to see. The general public must be so confused by me. I know they probably don't really care, but to be honest, um, uh, well, there's quite a few of us. Out I, there I think there's some people who care, but no, no, really, I, no, and I can't give you an exact date, and I'll tell you why. Um, because coming before that is so Rogue Warrior was it is is a yeah. movie, but there was an extra hour of footage you haven't seen, uh, which you know I know my DP would. Uh, um, Carl Wright would be very happy to see this footage come out because he did some great work, my God. Um, but there's an hour extra footage for that and there's an extra couple of scenes. Yeah. I just got in this weird tangent one day and I, sh- I shot an extra scene after Rogue Warrior. There is an extra scene we shot just mm-hmm. for fun. Yeah. And it looked great and yeah. you'll see it and it's like, yeah, yeah. whoa, you know. And then after that, it's like, well, let's, I need to do a movie to, you know, and something else to get in the can. I just went on these tangents. The next minute, Evolution War. Yeah. Film number yeah. two of Road yeah. Warrior was born. And again, keep shooting. And I realized there's no market for movies anymore. So what do I do? I've got all this footage for Rogue Warrior and Evolution War. And okay, well, guess what? We now have um, Rogue Warrior, the television series, yeah. which is in fact now called Age of Darkness. Yeah. Yeah. So Evolution War, the movie film number two will probably be sold to a couple of territories like japan because the movie went to number one in japan seriously um so they'll probably get released but then as soon as the movie's done evolution war then i'll finish up um age of darkness the television series sell it off to netflix or hulu whoever whoever will take it uh and that will be the Rogue Warrior television series season one is in the can yeah. just about once yeah. Tracy gets up for us and comes to, you yeah. know, Scotland, <laughs> if she does. Um, and then uh, as soon as that's cut and out the door, I'm immediately cutting the time war. Right. And as soon as that's out the door, <laughs> then I'm allowed to touch a camera again. <laughs> you see, and I, I sold my beloved red camera to, yeah. to, to pay for this other movie. I yeah. mean, I've sold just about everything I can to finish up the post-production yeah. on these movies, uh, TV series, uh, whatever they are called. Um, I just am so happy. I've never felt freer, freer in my life that I can now finally tell a story and it doesn't have to be confined to an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. It now can be confined to 10 hours. Yeah. And just you wait until season two of The Evolution War, I'm sorry, Age of Darkness, and just you wait for season two of The Time War. Because then I can plot and write properly mm. for those. Because um, I already know what the pl- plot is. Of... So everything's mapped out in, in where you've kind of thinking where you want to yes, go. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh yes. For both of them, it's mapped out. Um, and the time war is actually a novel. In nineteen ninety two, I wrote a novel which I never released, but it's a time travel novel, mm-hmm. and that will be season two. Okay. You know that's already written, and I can't wait for that. Okay. And, that's, that's, uh, that's real. I can't. Well, wait. I general I genuinely can't wait. I mean, after Rogue Warrior. Oh, it's it's. And I've told you how much I love Rogue Warrior. I, I, I generally do, but you know, it just it, you know I understand there's a lot of work for you to get done with this, but you know, just make sure it's pretty quick. You know, I, 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 I want it good. <laughs> so do I. Look what happened to Han Solo, and they said make well, it quick. Can, two things before we finish up that I want to ask you about, which are not quite related, but we had an interesting conversation yesterday. And then you mentioned something this morning that I want to ask you about David Jones. Uh, you said talk about David Jones about, but the Han Solo thing. We talk we're talking about the Han Solo movie, um, and I quite liked it. A bit disappointed. You said you really liked it. I think, yeah. um, but we had some interesting or use, I should say, had some interesting ideas about if you would have done it, how it would. And I thought well, these were great ideas. Mm-hmm. So could, do you want to sit? Do you want to yeah. tell? Go on, okay. Sir, go so on. if I was doing Han Solo, yeah. um, and you know, believe me, this is this is this would have been my pitch. Yeah. Cause I, but maybe I'm wrong, and it's okay to be wrong. But it's it's okay for me to dream. This sounds so good. Okay, so it would have been Han Solo, you know, doing the Kessel Run. Mm-hmm. It has to be a meeting Chewbacca mm-hmm. and stuff, and and Lando, and and getting the Millennium Falcon. This yeah. is all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. yes, the Imperial Ca- Academy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would have had him having early runs in with Darth Vader. Vader would have been throughout the whole thing because you know he, Han Solo would have stolen something himself, yeah. uh, you know from. The Imperials, yeah. like a Star Destroyer, or something, you know. <laughs> well, maybe not. Oh uh, no, you can't do that. But you know, something he would have stole. Like stole it. That's all the thing. Isn't yeah, it? you know, a Tide bomber at least, <laughs> um, and he would have stolen something, and then be a, the scourge of the Imperial yeah. Navy, and Vader would have not gone after him, but would have sent out. You know, would have he would have been under Vader's watchful eye, and yeah. they would be out to get him, and then he would have, um, you know, probably may have 
got him involved in a little bit heavily involved in the uh, the underground criminal network. Mm -hmm. So for sure, I would have had him working for Darth Maul. <laughs> Doesn't necessarily mean there's any force ability going on or anything else, but he would be under the guise of Darth Maul, and it would be spooking a him out of it. Bad guy, rogue warrior, rogue kind of turned good sort of thing. Yeah, that's, that's the thing with I was saying yesterday was I kind of got the sense of. He was. It just wasn't roguish enough. It wasn't, you know, the Han Solo, the young Han Solo. I expected it to be, not necessarily a likable character, or at least a kind of charm, but a little bit of nastiness there. And, and that didn't have that. And I think your idea would have been well, a little you, bit of blackness there. You know, it, 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 it would have been darkness and yeah. Vader. So when you see Empire Strikes Back, yeah, yeah, he says, yeah. "Bring Captain Solo and the Wookiee to me," and blah blah blah. It sounds like they had. He didn't say who is this person in this old starship. It's like they knew each it's other. It's like they knew yeah. each other. And the moment Han Solo saw Vader, he just he didn't even hesitate. He pulled out the gun yeah, yeah. and started shooting. He yeah. knew instinctively that this guy was and Vader wasn't supposed to be the poster boy for the Empire, no. even though, you know. But obviously they you know they obviously had a run in before. Yeah. You don't say, Oh, hello, bad guy, I'm you know, nice you, you know, I'm you don't just immediately pull out your gun and start shooting unless you've had some history. Yeah. So for sure there would have been history with Vader and Boba Fett had history. So, you know, yeah. you could see there's no more disintegrations, you know. Um, Han Solo had a history with Vader and we mm. didn't see it and they should have pulled up on that. That's that, would what I been, that would have been, that's a missed opportunity. It is. And then yeah. right at the end, I would have had Vader versus Darth Maul. It doesn't mean they have to kill each other, but it definitely means that, you know, they mess each other up pretty yeah, badly. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, Maul can get new new mecha legs yeah. and, uh, you know, he and make him make... make, make the 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 point of Vader and Maul fighting each other makes Darth Maul go a little yeah. crazy yeah. to the point where Kenobi just takes him out because he's a complete nut job, <laughs> you know. Because what happened between him being the head of um, Crimson Dawn and you know yeah. the point where he's been I mean, if you haven't seen this on yeah, Star yeah, Wars yeah, Rebels yeah, yeah. series, that's what I would have done, and I would have totally been a Vader Maul solo movie, and that would have. I'm telling you, that would have just been incredible. It would have been so much better than the actual thing that came. Which, you know, like I said, I was I, I don't want to hate on the Star Wars stuff because I think that was done enough. And I mean, you you'll have got your reaction from fans, I think, from whatever you've done. But the, the stuff that sort of Ryan Johnson got for Last Jedi and yeah. and and uh, Force Awakens, you know, and and the actress that played, I can't remember her name now, the Asian actress, the, the amount of abuse that they would get from online or from the I count myself as a fanboy. You know, I'm a, I was around in 77 when it first came out and I queued up. I was one of the first people in my town to see it only because I just got lucky and I went to see this film. Oh, my God. But, you know, I, I don't own it, you know, mm. whereas you, you know, some people do, do, just take ownership of this stuff. Yeah. And it's like, it's unfortunate, isn't it? Don't you think, you know? Yeah, I and I don't have a right to dictate what movie. That's what I would have done. Yeah. But mind you, I'm going to have to say this. The writing was impeccable. Uh, and, the you know, Ron Howard nailed it yeah the script he had he, he nailed it beautifully yeah. and it's just you know i'm looking at the bigger picture yeah and the same with last jedi you know and i love every piece of visual that ryan johnson did mm. the wrong johnson did the movie no <laughs> <laughs> no no tr truly no i mean truly i love it and yeah. i i um i just know with my brain and i'm maybe a little bit of a sick in in the head <laughs> i would have done something different yeah and I would have done Luke going to the dark side. Yeah. That's why he's hiding, because he went to the dark side and he's trying to get rid of that. I, I, and he I'm would totally have gone agreed. so ballistic at the totally end. Totally agree. The end of Last Jedi would have had Luke full on dark side, I am Vader, or whatever, you know, and, and take and, and you know, Kylo Ren turning to the light side to I fight him. I said that very thing when I went, when me, me and my son went to see it, it was kind of like, oh, they should have made Luke just totally go bad, just totally dark. You know, it should have such a missed opportunity to make him yeah. real. I, and we got a glimpse of that, didn't yeah, we? Didn't looked, you see it in yeah. his eyes for that second? Yeah. He was dark side Luke. Yeah. And Luke wanted to go there. I know <laughs> Mark Hamill wanted to go there. I know this for a fact. <laughs> so to finish off, th I, we've got a, we're going to go and do a little bit of filming this afternoon, maybe. I'm going to go out and have yes. a look around. We're going to look in a cave. Look some caves and they'll show you some, some of the local area. We're going to look at the caves of the Nephilim. <laughs> and that's a spoiler for you for the evolution <laughs> war. But be before that, before we finish, um, you've got to tell me, because you piqued my interest now. You said that you killed David Jones. Yes, okay. So um, David Jones, monkeys. Okay. Uh, well, okay. Again, me being British, being a young boy in Australia, uh, you know, I didn't have any many friends and I didn't really belong. 
And then I turn on this TV show called The Monkeys. Yeah. And I see this young boy with the same young man with the same haircut as me and he spoke very British and he the girls just loved him. <laughs> and I thought, wow, what I would give for the girls to love me like that. And all I have to do is be British and very weird and wear weird clothes and be very nice. And I thought, I want to be just like Davy Jones. Right. Okay, I was six. So, you know, it's, it's stupid things you think. So I'd be on my knees every night praying to God, I know. <laughs> and I wasn't a Christian, it wasn't in a Christian household or anything, but I said, God, please just let me turn into, let me turn out just like Davy Jones. Let me turn out to be just like Davy Jones. Yeah. I prayed this for four years running and then at about the age of 10, it stopped because, <laughs> you know, puberty started. Yeah. But that was my prayer every night religiously for four years. Let me turn out just like Davy Jones. So finally I was at some comic convention or no, some Hollywood signing convention or something or a Hollywood show in Los Angeles in Burbank I think it was and Davy Jones I, by the way I had met all the other monkeys yeah. prior to this you know which Mickey Dolans and Peter Tork had met yeah. and they were lovely people yeah. um, but then he, Davy Jones was there and, and I said hmm, interesting so he was just hanging about and I, I just had a moment to talk to him and I said look I gotta tell you this and he says I could just tell here we go <laughs> Um, when I was a boy, four years running, I prayed to God that I would turn out exactly like you. And he was like a little weary. And he looked up at me and said, <laughs> well, it's a good thing. God didn't answer your prayers. And I thought, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, God bless him. He was short. I, I was short. I was yeah. the shortest in my class. He was a jockey, wasn't he? I think he, didn't you, when he was, I remember reading that he was, uh, oh, didn't he train to be, he wanted to be a jockey. I trained to be a jockey. Yeah. So he was a really kind of tiny guy. He was, yeah. but he was lovely. Yeah. He was a lovely human being. I mean, you know, you can't define people by their size, but he was just, he was just a short guy. And I wasn't because I grew up and you know, I thought, yeah, he said that in a funny way. It was yeah. a joke way. And I thought he smiled. Um, and I, I, you know, and I, and, and I said, you know, I said, yeah, it's, that's fine. <laughs> you know, it was funny. And we laughed, but I got a sense that he was so weary, you yeah. know, about life and everything. It seemed like it, not the way to the world. He was over everything. Mm. He had a documentary team following him around, doing a documentary on him, okay. autographs, this and that. And he was like, hmm, I'm kind of over things, you yeah. know, you get that sort of weirdness in his vibe and I said you know can we get a photo together of course he was so sweet about mm. it and I got a picture with him that afternoon he got on a plane that night flew back to Florida I think two days later he was dead so I have the last photograph ever taken of with him now you know in the in, the, in physics they say when you meet your two two identical things yeah. meet you know they cancel each other yeah. out yeah so the, the here was the boy who wanted to be Davy Jones and he was Davy Jones wishing he was not Davy Jones. <laughs> and it was like, I I felt I killed him. Because, you know, it was like he met himself. The man he, he was could have been. Yeah. And I met the person I could, I, I the man I could have been. Yeah, yeah. And we met each other, and that was the last, and I swear I have the last photograph ever taken by him. Nice. And I feel I killed him. <laughs> and it's seriously, and I was devastated. It's like, my God. And it's like, did I kill him? <laughs> Did it? Did the universe conspire for me to, to you know, the, the, in physics, I, I, this I, works. It doesn't work in real a life. A friend of mine, a female friend of mine, um, who I was at university with um, a few years ago, she um, is convinced she killed Joe Strummer from the um, the band that what the band Joe Strummer, um, punk band. It's gone out of my head. Um, she kissed him in the pub, and the next day he died. Um, I don't remember the band and just make you know, it's absolutely gone now. Does she brush her teeth a lot? Well, you know, no, she was an attractive girl and everything. She just she went up to Joe and said, Can I give you a kiss on the cheek? And she kissed him on the cheek. The next day he dropped dead. Uh, kiss of death. Kiss of death. So so basically Neil Johnson, filmmaker and murderer of David Jones. It's you know, it's yeah. It should be on your record, mate, to be perfect. Right? Yeah. It, it it truly, I mean seriously, it really The Clash. It, the, it, clash. It, the Clash. The Clash. It haunts me. You know, and it's like I just wanted to, you know, I've been around enough famous people. It's like, dude, I, I would have loved to have been his friend. He looked like he seemed friendless. Yeah. In, in, and I know he wasn't. He had a wonderful wife and yeah, probably yeah, had yeah. good people. But in this situation, he seemed uh, alone and lost the fire yeah. for life. So, you know, he had a... Maybe it just hits the, the... Was it a con, did you say? Was it a convention that it was... It was yeah, it's one of those yeah, Hollywood signing fan. things. You're not, a, you're not a huge fan. I've done a lot. It's okay. Yeah. I've just, you know, there's been a lot of, I've dealt with celebrities and 
you rub shoulders with some of the nastiest celebrities yeah. uh, at these things. So it's 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 been there's been some odd moments. That might, might, might be another conversation, I think. That That's another conversation. <laughs> <laughs> right, listen, mate, it's been uh, absolute joy. I mean, we, we had a great time. So we're going to go and do some what you do, you do your thing this afternoon. Um, so thank you, Neil. Uh, it's been a blast. Cheers, mate.